What's up, everybody? Welcome back to some more Planet Coaster. We are back at Triwood Towers. Here is a park that I haven't been into in a while, and the idea behind this park is it's going to be kind of a parody of Alton Towers. Uh, and the idea being like it's it's a uh, it's a park in I don't know England somewhere, and we're just going to have a bit of fun, basically. Uh, a lot of a lot of innuendos, so to speak, even in the logo, if you notice. So what we're going to do today is I am going to build the park's first coaster, which you are watching me do right now at the moment. Uh, we're going to do a, a classic aero corkscrew coaster with a couple loops and some other things like that. The idea of this is that they built this, I don't know, somewhere maybe in the 80s, uh, probably right around, I don't know, maybe 87, I think, is when Vortex opened. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna have it's, it's gonna have a couple loops and it's gonna have a couple core screws and It's gonna have like a bat wing. So that's the idea behind it And I took a lot of inspiration from a couple different coasters uh, Mostly I took inspiration from vortex vortex is probably one of my favorite aero coasters uh, It's also probably one of the few that I've actually ridden so unless you count mine trains, but uh, I kind of wanted to come off of the lift hill and come into a double loop, which will then go into a bat wing here. And the reason I wanted to do this is because I'm going to do kind of how like Vortex has that little area, or had, I should say, since Kings Island did remove that coaster. Uh, it's kind of a little area that's raised. And you can kind of see, like from the path there, you can kind of see a little bit of uh, the Batwing as you were walking past and stuff. It's it's my favorite section at Kings Island to just kind of sit and, and watch the coaster, um, at least when it was there. And it's just something I, I love to take a lot of inspiration from for a lot of my designs and stuff. As always, I love to do a lot of path interactions with my coasters, things like that. Uh, I'm also taking inspiration from corkscrew at Cedar Point where the corkscrews of the coaster go over top of the path in the plaza. I really like that too so I wanted to incorporate that into my design as well. So in order to make sure that I got my corkscrews exactly where I wanted them, I needed to plan this out in advance. So what I did here was I made an extra coaster and just the corkscrews themselves and then that way i could kind of like put them where i wanted them be like okay yeah yeah that looks good and then i could have the transition coming off of the mid course brake run so that it would actually like flow down and i could match everything up a little better with where i wanted it now obviously i can't connect this coaster to a second coaster that's impossible to do but you know it at least helps me kind of figure out where I'm going with it and how it's going to connect that that was the biggest thing I wanted to do here but um, yeah this video it's it's not gonna be very very long at all uh, a lot of it was just you know I mean I, I pretty much did a test run of this before um, and kind of had an idea of where I was going with it so I built it once and then they're like yeah yeah that looks really good I like that uh, so I just kind of took a first pass at it and then I went back and was like, okay, yeah, yeah, uh, this this looks good. And then let's just go ahead and, and hit the record button, start over, and record the building of it and change up a few things that I wanted to change, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I am really, really happy with how this coaster came out, too. And considering the trouble that I have had with this, which is one reason why I haven't been back in this park in forever since, like, January... Uh, that's when I actually started the park was back in January as part of my 31 days of Planko. Uh, we kind of started this park up and I meant to kind of work on it a lot more than I have. But I did an entire live stream one day trying to figure out how to build this coaster. And I, I just couldn't figure it out. I, I just had no ideas about what I wanted to do. And it's taken me this long to kind of come back to it and be like, you know what? I, I think I know what I want to do. So um, I, I started with just being like, you know, I really need to work on, on Triwood Towers. I really need to do that. And then I was just like, okay, so I, the problem was I couldn't figure out how to do that coaster. So I was just like, let's, let's look at a few things. So I asked about it in my Discord 
And I asked, of course, on, you know, I kind of mentioned it on Twitter and stuff. And one of my Discord members, which was Infinity Gaming, he actually mentioned taking a look at Viper as Six Flags, which I did. I took a look at it. And I don't like the big mega loopers like that, where they have a loop that's like way up in the air. You know what I mean? It's like it lifted too far up. I'm not a huge fan of that. I just don't think it looks good. So that's why I don't like those particular kinds of aero coasters. Um, I wanted something a bit more compact and stuff too, and a little smaller. But I didn't want to do just the basic, you know, lift heel, loop, couple of corkscrews, and back around. You know, I didn't want to do their, their basic model that they came out with. Even though that probably would have been maybe what this park would have had at the time. I, I still think I, I wanted to do something a little bit more custom. So that's what we got, and I am pretty happy with it. I honestly am. Um, I, I think the coaster came out great. So after this, once I get done just kind of fixing a couple things here on it, I actually off stream, uh, where I'm not actually recording and stuff, I went back and kind of smoothed a couple sections out, changed a few things. But most of all, the design itself stayed the same. The only thing I changed was just like uh, certain sections on where they were, how high they were off the ground, etc. Because, like I said, the bat wing over there has to go, it has to be down into the ground a little bit. So it needed to drop down some over there. And I had to like do a lot of work with like lifting certain parts of it, and especially a lot of work right here with the station and moving some things around there. Uh, so heights and some other stuff got changed off screen, but for the most part the entire coaster stays exactly the same But uh, yeah, I I personally I am very happy with the layout. I'm very happy with the design. I hope you guys also are Extremely happy with it now this video. It's just basically it's quick video. I'm not doing a whole lot really with it uh, just kind of doing the coaster and stuff today and You know that way it's kind of a short video that most people can kind of watch all the way through they don't just skip through it um, We're not going to work on the station or anything like that I'm not even a hundred percent sure where this coaster is going to go in the park just yet Because the only thing we actually have in this park so far that's actually built is just the entrance and it's not even a hundred percent done so but I did want to kind of come in and do the park's first signature coaster, you know, because back in the day, you know, Cedar Point, they had the corkscrew coaster and they had that plaza with the corkscrews going over it. And then Alton Towers, literally when they, you know, it, this, the corkscrew coaster was one of their biggest coasters that they had back in, in the original days. Uh, and it was kind of the start of that park becoming kind of a thrill company instead of just a smaller park with not a lot there so it kind of got them it, it was the start of their their big rides basically at least that's what i remember from watching a few history things on on alton towers but uh so i wanted this coaster to be kind of the same thing i wanted it to be kind of a signature coaster you know and i think it came out great i really do um of course now that i'm looking at it I think it almost kind of uh, is very close to the same design that I did at King's Falls. Hmm. I may have to go back and look at that. It, it actually may very well be very close to the same design. Uh, I hope not. I don't think it is. But it, it is kind of close. But then again, a lot of coasters are fairly similar in design. Especially a lot of the aero coasters and stuff. So, uh, now... At this point, this is when I kind of was like, let's go back in. Now that everything is kind of done, a lot of stuff is smoothed out to where I want it. Uh, let's go ahead and color the coaster. And a lot of the times when I am working on the colors of what my coaster is going to be, I spend a lot of time just trying to find just the right colors, things that mix well and stuff. And with this one, it actually didn't take that long. I kind of already knew that I wanted it to be kind of a blue. And then as kind of a last minute thing like right on the spot here I was like well what color do we want the rails to be and I was like let's go with maybe a yellow kind of an or maybe an orangey yellow and I colored it that color as you can see and I think it looks pretty good if anything maybe the blue could be maybe a little darker which I do think I go back and change um, 
but I'm very, very happy with it. We could say like this is the anniversary of the coaster, so it just got a brand new paint job, and that's why it looks all new and stuff. You know, because parks do that. They they take coasters and they repaint them, especially for anniversaries and stuff. So, um, yeah, so that, that's kind of what I'm thinking. As we're as we continue building the park and stuff out, and adding more rides and stuff to it, I think that you know we could say that in the year that this park is running at the moment that we're creating an entire park it is the anniversary of this coaster so i don't know 25 years probably longer <laughs> wow actually probably more like uh we're like 35 years something like that if i'm thinking about it correctly but 87 to 21 i don't know somewhere in, that, in those range so we can say it's about maybe a 35 35th anniversary sure why not why not let's just say that so there's a lot more to go in this actual park quite a bit because like i said i only have just the entrance bill so far we still have to decide where we're going to put this coaster as far as where the entrance and stuff is located and everything and do a lot more work with the entrance and uh, then we can kind of work on the station and a couple other things but like i said you know it's been a while since i've been in this park and I really like the idea of this park, and I kind of would like to try to finish it. Especially since Silverwood is getting close to getting done. Um, speaking of Silverwood, it is October. And I've got, my friends are actually, they have the park right now, and are kind of working on decorating it for Halloween. So, can't wait to see what they come up with. I myself have my own Halloween project that I'm not going to wait until the last minute to work on this year. <laughs> I'm actually going to start work on it very, very soon. That way I can completely get it done before the end of the month and have it ready for Halloween. And I know you guys love having POVs and stuff, so here's just a quick POV of the coaster as it stands right now. A little more smoother than what an arrow actually should be, I think. <laughs> but anyway, that's the video for today. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed just kind of this quick build and... I can't wait to kind of come back into it and, and, and show more and do more work and stuff with it. As well as some of my other projects, uh, we've got Planet Zoo stuff coming up because we got all new DLC coming out for Planet Zoo. So keep an eye out for that over the next couple of days. And I will see you guys in the next video. Wherever you are in the world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Thanks for watching, guys.